Hi there, welcome to TCM, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. For many people, even die-hard classic movie fans, the history of American animated films begins with Walt Disney and his most famous creation, Mickey Mouse. But that's not the real story, certainly not the whole story. Disney was one of many animation pioneers, phenomenally creative and talented innovators who took on two equally important challenges a century ago. The first was pretty straightforward, how to create motion picture animation. The second hurdle was how to do it efficiently enough to turn a profit. To be clear, Walt Disney was a visionary whose success has come to define big screen animation. But tonight, we're looking at the work of another pioneer, Max Fleischer, as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of Fleischer Animation with a collection of some of his studio's most imaginative early productions. Up first, we have six animated classics from the silent era. Those will be followed at 10.45 Eastern with another six shorts from the sound era. All 12 of these films were curated by Tommy Jose Stathis, who owns one of the world's largest and most impressive collections of silent and early sound cartoons. Stathis was a consulting producer who was also featured prominently in Cartoon Carnival, the 2021 documentary we had earlier tonight. Max Fleischer's career began at a Brooklyn newspaper where he ultimately became a cartoonist. That began a lifelong love of animation and with it a lifetime of innovation. During the earliest years of filmmaking, cartoons tended to be stiff and jerky. Fleischer created a technique that combines a projector with an easel, making it fast and efficient for artists to trace images from live action film. The device was a rotoscope and it is still being used today. In 1921, Max partnered with his brother Dave to form a studio out of the inkwell, which later became Fleischer Studios. Working together, Max and Dave produced and directed the short films included in this collection, part of their signature series, Out of the Inkwell Films. The series was based on a simple premise. The cartoon characters spring from an inkwell on an animator's desk, with the cartoonist played on screen by Max Fleischer himself. But before Dave and Max partnered, Max worked for Bray Studios, headed by J.R. Bray, who founded the first successful animation studio. And the first short we have for you tonight, The Boxing Kangaroo, is from Max's time with Bray in 1920. From the collection of Tommy Stathis, here are six Fleischer shorts, starting with The Boxing Kangaroo. So many wonderful little things stand out in cartoons made by Fleischer Studios. Among them, the use of special animation techniques and camera tricks to create visual gags, making Max and Dave Fleischer innovators as much as animators. As we just saw, those tricks often involve playing on the connection between the real world and the cartoon world. The Fleischers also helped lead the way in the use of sound. With the release of The Jazz Singer in 1927, Sound officially came to the movies, and the Fleischers, they were all in. Coming up next, as part of tonight's celebration of the 100th anniversary of Fleischer Animation, we've got a specially curated collection of six animated Fleischer shorts from early in the sound era, including cartoons featuring two of their best-known characters. So, stay with us. Hi there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz, and welcome to TCM, where we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the animation created by brothers Max and Dave Fleischer, with a dozen of their classic shorts from the 1920s and 30s. Our last group of six shorts came out of the silent era, and up next we'll continue telling the Fleischer story as the studio moved into the sound era, adding a new dimension to some of Hollywood's most creative cartoons. The studio was founded by Max Fleischer and his brother Dave, and while Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse are the animation pioneers most of us think of first today, the Fleischers may have been the more innovative team in those early days of motion picture animation, leading the way with new techniques designed to make cartoons smoother, both in the way they looked on screen and in the process that got them off the page and to the screen. Max Fleischer held dozens of patents, including the rotoscope, an innovative process of creating animation for live action film that is still used today. Another area where the Fleischers broke ground? Product placement. With the collapse of the stock market in 1929, the studios had to get creative to make money. One solution was to reach out to business leaders who could help offset production costs by putting a specific product right in the cartoons. 
and you'll see a perfect example of that in our first sound short, Hurry Doctor, made, quote, in arrangement and cooperation with the Texaco Oil Company. Also on the docket, shorts featuring two of Fleischer's most popular cartoon characters, Betty Boop, created especially for the screen, and Popeye the Sailor, adapted from a successful comic strip. The first of the two Popeye shorts we have, Let's Sing with Popeye, features a signature Fleischer creation where we're invited to sing along by following the bouncing ball. From the collections of two of the world's foremost experts on classic animated shorts, Tommy Jose Stathis and Steve Stanchfield of Thunderbean Animation, and specially curated for this TCM salute to the 100th anniversary of Fleischer Animation, here are six classic sound shorts from Fleischer Studios. You likely took note of the impressive backgrounds in the Oscar-nominated short Popeye the Sailor meets Sinbad the Sailor. They were created by Max Fleischer's patented three-dimensional effect that he called the stereoptical process. Fleischer used a 3D model instead of a flat background with the animation cells photographed in front of it. Notably, the Sinbad cartoon was part of a trilogy of Technicolor Popeye epics which were roughly three times as long as regular Popeye cartoons. Our celebration of the 100th anniversary of Fleischer Animation continues next Saturday, one week from tonight, with a look at the work of Max Fleischer's son, director Richard Fleischer. In keeping with the family tradition, Richard specialized in innovative visual effects. Coming up, Eddie Muller steps in to bring you this week's edition of Noir Alley, and for the first time in recorded human history, Somebody is jealous of Eddie, and that someone is me, because he has a special guest, actress Dana Delaney. Tonight, Vittorio Gassman and Gloria Graham are on the lam in a hard-boiled drama set in New York. Stick around, because The Glass Wall is coming up next on TCM.